Alright, congratulations, we're here now, five days. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> so, um, so today, we have mostly just the morning, so if you need to leave after lunch, feel free. And I suggest beers here, but we can discuss <laughs> other techniques or... I think you should take a question uh, mark away. Okay. <laughs> That's a really important update in it. Okay, great. And good, so after lunch, I'll be here so we can... What? <laughs> so after lunch, yeah, during the lunch we can have it here. No, I uh, just want to say that if you're around and want to discuss more about the project, Yesterday, I was talking with Erin about, about her project. So if you want to discuss more, we can do that inside of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging out there. But yeah, no, seriously, uh, I'll be happy to brainstorm about whatever you guys want. OK, so now, remember uh, yesterday, we talked about lagged association rates. And now we're going to fit some models to them see how can we better interpret those curves. And then in the second part, after coffee, I'll briefly present uh, next uh, other directions where we can go from this. So remember the workshop is basically, uh, is based on introduction to methods and models. So I'll just point out uh, other directions that if you want to go further into this, you can. So we're just going to go through quickly to the methods to answer those a little bit more advanced questions. Sweet. Just remember what is the Bohr analysis. So we want to, the lag association rate is the probability of seeing two individuals now. If you see two individuals now in a given period of time, what's the probability of finding them together after? another black time t. The no association rate is this, this probability if they associate, associate at random. So we want to pair one of the other. And if in your study case you are not sure if you captured or observed all the individuals, you don't know if the zero in your data means they are not associated with or they are not there or you couldn't record them then you use the standardized like association rate to correct for that. So it's the, technically is the probability that a randomly chosen associate of A after a given time would be B. So if they're associated today and then you choose a random individual, what's the probability of this guy B, the individual B? So the like association rate looks something like that. They tend to decay over time. So if A and B are associated here, the probability of them being associated later, usually the longer the time lag, this will decay, and then and they may decay in different ways. We want to explore how they decay over time. No association rate is the same probability, but if they just choose whoever they want, so that would be our benchmark for comparison. And in standardized, when uh, you not, not all individuals are being recorded with the same probability. So last reminder, those are some theoretical expectations for the decay of this probability. It might stay constant over time, so everybody interact with everyone forever. And by forever, I mean the study period. Uh, they could represent shorter associations, so they start everybody super happy interacting with everyone, and then decay after about 10 cycle periods until no association rate. We can have a combination of those. Some individuals tend to stay together for most of the time, but others, <coughs> other associations are a little bit briefer, so they will decay, but still uh, higher than the new association. 
similar to this, but now the first disease association is much quicker, so it, it happens within one sampling period, so we don't reach 100% uh, here together. Within the same, the first sampling period, you already have lots of disassociation, and then some of them persist over time, that's why you have more or less not much variation here. Uh, we can have now combining all the possibilities uh, two, two decades. One, because over time they tend to disassociate, and the other one, we tend to match with individuals leaving the area, either by death or emigration. And then you have the crazy cycle back where everything theoretically could happen, but we've never seen in the real world. So we go and plot stuff like that. Like, you plot the real association rates, and some of them look more stable than the others. They tend to decay over given uh, time periods. But yeah, sure. What kind of information we can actually extract from this? Sorry, a question. That means that you skip the first 10 days? Here? Yeah. Uh, because I saw in, in few, yeah. okay. so you disappear then, or you couldn't sample and then you um, sample after a while? Is this something like that? So you basically you collect the data, you go on holiday, you come back, and, and you get ten days later that. Uh, I think. Or are you only able to tell the person association several days later? For example, you average. If you could train your data, for example, just for males, you might have it. Because at the beginning, you only saw females, for example. Oh, yeah, that's. But in that case, it won't. That's it should start at the one. Yeah, because it's the way that the source code doesn't So in that field, the restrictions that you said were quite Oh, okay. So it's just a sub sample, basically, of your. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if you've got like a five females and one male in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you look at the only the males and how they associate. No, no, yeah, can't, you can't get that. Because if you get male to male association, it only happens 10 days and do something. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so it's upside. Okay. So we can look at them, or you can try to extract more information from them um, by feeding models to or observed lack, lack of association rates or standardized. So here's a model that was fit to this data. The explanation became model and it has some parameters. We can use these parameters to try to infer what's going on here, for example. We might try to, we can estimate the typical, typical group size using these parameters here this first plus this one and then so one divided by the, this this parameter but this parameter will give you more or less 32 individuals or you can try to estimate the rate of this association which would be given by the first this, this parameter here so this is more or less uh, 0 0.1 per day you can get uh, estimates of mortality or integration, how much individuals live here every year. So you multiply this parameter here uh, by the number of days. So you, you have more or less 2% of an individual lead per year. And what's the last one? Or in this case, this, uh, this is 
kernels. So the unit size number of individuals there here, you could also try to estimate from this uh, data. So we have the typical group size is 32, and we will multiply this by this parameter divided by this and, oh, and this. Anyway, so using the model, we're not looking at the real data anymore, but the best, the model that fits the best to it. And then from this curve now, the, the blue one, we can extract these values, this parameter, and then interpret them biologically. In that case, mortality means more uh, mortality within the group. So, I mean, no, it's not a population parameter, it's more a, a group parameter. So, how many individuals leave the group? Is that? Uh, yeah, in this case, if you're fetching the data for your entire population, then it's the. Uh, if you have the population. Yeah, yeah if you're working in the population. It's essentially, it's the probability of someone leave the, your data set here. Correct. Could yeah. be that population. That's how useful these models can be. In that previous slide, the Kilowell association is one of all individuals. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. So it might just have something to do with the sampling. Okay. The sample game for 10, 5 minutes later. I can't find Unless it's the transient Kilowell. Okay. No, no. Uh, ah, that's including all the. Ah, okay. I don't know, there's no explanation in the paper why it started from that point. Yeah, but I've seen it happen in my own stuff, so. Sorry. And now, because it, it should, it basically, what it does, it, it, yeah. you have a, a t equals 0, and then you compare t1, 2, 3, 10, 100. So if you don't have 0, Everything should be. So won't that be. But that if it's every day, like if t equals one is like for every. Yeah, one yeah some day. Day. But this one is starts at t ten. But then won't that just be like, okay, now I'm going to start my sampling period, and you can't be on like, oh no, you're going to start sampling once you see your first end. So like, isn't it more of a case of that you standardize your thing? So that you start at, say, for instance, you start observing October 1st and you end in October 2nd. It's always to refer to your starting period, so it can't be that. Might have to be averaging, maybe average, oh, so to play around with it. There's not enough information to this thing. Mm. We'll There's something there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Either. Right. So we have the lag association rates, and we want to fit explanation decay models, assuming that over time things will decay. So try iterative convergence to the original association data, and it will give us uh, some basis to uh, accept or reject the the behavior of that curve that you observe. So, you know, if you think if, if you think there's a decay over here and your best fit model shows something different, then you know it's a, it gives you a, a basis to interpret better how lag association changes over t. And then you can also estimate the parameters from the model and not from the original data, like I just showed. So it's, a, it's useful, but we have to be careful with over-interpretation. We're trying to feed a predefined model to your observed data. So everything you're going to um, interpret is from the model, not exactly from the data. So you, you have usually eight different models. So they usually fit one of those scenarios we just discussed, but it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not that strict. We are interpreting also the curve of lag, lag association where it's not exactly the social structure per se. So just remember that. And these models and scenarios, they have these nice names. 
preferred associations, constant companions, and disassociate. But those are suggestions. There are labels for the scenarios and models, not exactly what is happening. So I don't take it too, too seriously. The same model, because you have a uh, limited range of models, they can fit totally different social structures. Con keep in mind the temporal scale of your study and what you know beforehand about the social system you're working with. So if you're working with orcas, for example, you know they have beforehand from other studies that they tend to have long-lasting relationships. And if you're working with, I don't know, uh, dolphin species that are uh, super fluid and might change over time, with, with the sh uh, white sharks that kind of know beforehand that they will be mostly solitary. So if you want to fit this, these models to this type of data, Maybe even if you get a stable curve, it doesn't mean these guys prefer each other. It means that within that temporal scale, uh, they were seen together. So just keep in mind the uh, biological basis of your system. And you're going to use most of the time quasi uh, archaic information criteria to select the models. So it works fine, but it's not theoretically justified if you want to go super technical on this. So does it mean you can use any? No, you can't or? use. No, you can use. Uh, you can use AIC or uh, QAIC, which corrects for the over dispersion of the yeah, yeah. You can use both, but it works fine. But it, if you go deep into the theory, it's not you know, most statistically most appropriate. There's a paper on this that explains all the details and I never but thought it. We can use that. That's yes, the, okay. Okay. Yes. you can. Um, so all the models we're going to fit, so we have eight for the lag association rates and equivalent for the standardized one. So they are all from the exponential uh, family. They all, except these two, assumes that they decay over time. So here we want to model this, uh, the probability here of associations over time or the standardized one. And those are some suggestions if you want, you can create your own. Uh, if you have a, it doesn't have to be explanation if you have a good reason for that. And I think Ryan has created one, you created your own for your data. <laughs> So uh, that one included cyclicity, uh, cyclicity, you became sine curve. So the idea is we have some models. We're going to try to fit all of them and see the one that fits the best, and then interpret the model and not the data anymore. Okay, I'm going to walk through each model quickly, but my. My goal with the next slides is to have uh, lots of details that you can use later if you apply for this. You can come back and, and look, oh, these, these parameters here, if I divide this by one, that will give me more, I don't know, group size or unit size. So don't worry much about the details. It's more uh, so you know the types of models we have. And then when you use, you can come back and, and interpret for yourself. OK, first one. It's the simpler one. It's just constant over time, 100% all the time. That's the simplest scenario. It matches that first one we talked. If you have a population that with closed units that never interact with anybody else, they're always together. So the probability of finding them together will always be one over all time lapse. The second one. It's similar. It keeps over time, but it's lower than one. And this uh, this value here is the a. So you, your parameter here a is. So it has uh, some associations that decay super super quickly. So we think the same the first sampling period it drops from here to here, but then it's stable over time. Now, if A 
it's pretty much the same as the new association rate. So if it drops that quickly and it's you know super close to the new association rate here, then you have no sign of any you know preferred associations over time. It drops quickly and they associate randomly. That might be the case the for chart. white sharks. And if A is greater than the new association here, then some associations are super brief because they drop within the first sampling period, but others are not, and they're non-random, and then can indicate social preferences or even if they're just using the same spot as it. So it's, if you test the new hypothesis that we test in the second day and then apply these models, you might have a better idea of what's going on. So you would expect this scenario, for example, so it, it matches that theoretical scenario of rapid disassociation with other preferred companions. Good. Now the third scenario is uh, yeah, the explanation K. So we start everybody together and then it drops over time. So this could uh, if you fit this model, if this is your best model, it could indicate you have very large populations where individuals associate for about 1 divided by B. So whatever this value will be when you estimate this parameter, 1 divided by it is the number of sampling periods uh, that they associate for more or less, you know, one for about this time they associate and then they split and never again and that explains why it drops to zero. If you're dealing with a large population, that one interpretation, if you're dealing with a small population, uh, you might uh, indicate that individuals, they just avoid previous associates so to have bad social experience, like this guy's a jerk and never want to talk with him again. That might have, it might happen in this class. Because <laughs> we're a very small population. Or could either mean a population with a very high mortality or immigration and of about, see how tricky it is, of about this value per sampling period. So the same model, it, it suggests three very different scenarios. Mm. So you want to know beforehand what type of information you have from your population. If you're dealing with a large population, it might be this or even this. If you're dealing with a small population, it could be this or this. So the thing, what you observe is they start together and they disassociate over time up to zero, either because they never want to see each other again or because they leave the area because they immigrate or die. In this case, we can uh, run the lagged identification rate, probability of seeing, seeing individuals again, if it drops over time as well. So if you have, here's this association, right? If you have the identification rate and it also drops over time, it means you're not seeing these guys in the area anymore, either because they died or they left. So if these two kind of matches, then you favor this scenario. So you need to know, you can't do this completely blindly. Let me put my data there and see what's going on. You, you need some previous information. You need to know the biology of your system. The fourth model, uh, now, is, now basically you're just going to combine this possibility. So we will combine the two, this one with this one. So we know we start lower than one, so there's a huge dissociation within the sample period, and then it drops to zero. So we have here the lar two, and here the lar three. Uh, so this bit, if this is the case, so A, this parameter, is, is the proportion of associate, 
of associations that these associate within one sampling period. And the other bit is the associations that persist this first period, uh, but eventually goes up to zero due to either because they associate it randomly or because they avoid previous associations or because they leave. So this three scenarios is the same as, this three cases is the same as the previous one, right? So we're just combining this to a bit. If model five out of, oh, I can use, either use the, model five out of eight, now we have, we start with everybody associating with each other, then they decay, and but they level off above zero. So there's some, some, uh, like this. So start with everybody there, and then they level off. If they level with the new association rates, so that would, that would match the case of casual acquaintances in a closed population. If they level off above the new association rate, Then it's the other case, constant companions with casual acquaintances. Can you see the difference between these two? Or not much? No? Yes? Yes? No? No? So. If with the casual acquaintances now, it, okay, that's when it, it like sort of coincides with the NAR line. Yes. Um, and then. Is that indicating that the that their association is not different from being random? Yes. So it's like they're just associating because well, that's what you kind of expect. Yes. But if it levels then off above the NAR, then it's that it's you can say that it's not because of chance. It's because they're referring yes. to. Okay. That's it. So. Yeah, that's exactly where it is. Any other, any questions? That's a good explanation. Thank you. Uh, okay. So it could be a case where we have permanent social units that associate temporally. You know, you have these sperm whales. You can see that these guys are always together. These guys are pretty much always together, but sometimes. They form one single group, and then they split again. They come here, and then they go back to there. So that will that will create a scenario too, or could be casual associations in a adult population, for example, uh, that last for about one divided by b. So we're gonna take that parameter there. B and we give you more or less how many sampling periods these preferred associations will last. So it's a useful way to quantify these parameters. Okay, now I'm going to mix. Oh, oh, there's another case. Will also be that scenario where you have a permanent unit, core of individuals that always interact, and sometimes a dude come from. Canada, <laughs> something like that. So that will explain the shorter associations and the, the short associations that decay over time because this guy leaves. And also it's explain the higher ones because they're always together. Okay, this now we combine large two with five. Five is the one we just stopped. These three cases. The only difference is, is instead of starting with one, we're going to start with uh, below that. So there's disassociation within 
the almost within the first sampling period. Good. See that we are we have few scenarios and we just mix and match them. Combines two with five, so we have rapid disassociation within one sampling period and then the decay and level off. So all the scenarios we discussed will apply here. We're just combining them. Now we we have two the final two models they contain two the case, two level. So one here and one there. So we have two levels of disassociation. So essentially you have we're working with two simple, uh, time scales. So the association rate would drop at one level, a long longer one, a uh, shorter one and a longer one. So at the short decay uh, might represent just individuals disassociate disaffiliations over time, as in the scenario five that we discussed, and the other one, the longer one, may be explained by okay, so, right, the shorter one uh, represents you have some permanent relationships, but they change over time. In the lo longer one, it's because individuals either leave the area or die, or there's uh, shifts in preferred association. So we are best buddies for a couple of years, but then you screw up and I'm taking off. So that might also happen. I don't know these so-called friends of the animal world. I'm sure it's Joseph's fault. <laughs> Or it could be combinations of this. So there's a lot of uncertainty, but you know we can imagine thinking logically. This could be potential scenarios going on. So, so it's it means basically uh, here having possibly two biological uh, situations, or just one that can explain the whole curve, but two almost time period at which. The association changes yes. um, differently. Yes. So in this case, it changes twice in two yeah, different yeah. scales. On a shorter one, there will be one decay here over short term, short term, short term and long term. Long term. So the long term could be because it depends, you know, on the lifespan of your study system. If they leave for 17 years and you're working with 10 years, then you know, it might not be much of a fact, but if it's the other way around, they leave 10 years here, have 70 years of data, it's reasonable to assume that a bunch of dudes just yeah. died. So this might explain that. Or if that's the case, so maybe, you know, there's major shifts in between preferred associations or individuals move from one preferred mm -hmm. unit to the other. It depends on the biology of yeah. your study system. If you work with orcas, white sharks, don't show birds. I still don't know how to the name of the species they work with. Sociable weaver. 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 We don't know it. <laughs> I'm the one with actually. <laughs> 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 Well, there's this one single place where we don't have accent, which is your hometown, like, talking with your mom. That, that's the only situation where you speak correctly. To move 10 meters from your house, you have an accent. So the last scenario, we combine large two with seven. Just remember, seven is this one with two two levels, two drops, and the large two is the one that everybody disassociates within the same period. So we have rapid disassociation within the first and then two, two levels of disassociation, one in the short, short period of time, one in the longer, and the reasons for them are the same. Not even going to talk about them.
Good, so those are eight potential scenarios, potential models that you can fit and they are ready to be fit in SOC Prox. So you have your data, you can select all of them and see which one fits the best and then you interpret according to the biology of your study system. Now, just gonna go through the four models for the standard dyes lag association rates and they are variations of these eight models so we don't need to spend much more time in them. So the first one, everybody's together forever, happy ending, and it matches, it would match the closed and no interacting units. Uh, okay. It could also be match the, the one with the second scenario if this is not the highest, so if, if there's not one here, if it's lower than that, so it would be the other scenario. And then if this is the case, your parameter A, the single parameter here, will give you the inverse of the gregariousness. If it's greater, uh, if A, what? Maybe you can estimate the inverse of the gregariousness, and then if A is greater than, is lesser than that, then it means rapid disassociation. If it's similar to that, it means close interaction, no interacting units. Why would you look at the inverse of the gregariousness? Uh, so gregariousness, a great class. I was fearing that class. <laughs> um, so let me just see real quick. Mm -hmm. It's a tendency for elements to form smaller or larger groups. Yes. And the mean of the is Sorry? It's a tendency to be in the group, yeah. which results yes. in that then when you contact it, that some individuals would be not regarded so that would be not groups so that's small. Yes. Two by two interaction. Yes. You're not looking at an individual level here. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at an individual level here. You're looking at a group okay, level. Okay, here is this population. Correct. Okay, but then why would you look at the inverse? But well, we're assuming that it's going to decrease, then, isn't that why we're using the inverse? Uh, right? we're assuming that it's just going to... To make a percentage between 0 and 1. Basically, yeah, just to make it between 0 and 1. Because you need to make it between 0 and 1. Okay. You see, 0 and so 1. So you're turning it into a proportion? Proportion, 1 over your mean. Yeah. That means the receipt, no the receipt between yeah. zero and one. If you make one over a number, it becomes between yeah. zero and one. But why? Because you want to standardize between zero and one. Yes. Okay. Because A and B. So that it doesn't change depending on your sample size, etc. But you can compare how we are on their side, for ah. example. Sense. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would just disagree with the advantage. I think the standardized bar it starts at one. We have one immigration happening right now. <laughs> No, you're right. No, it doesn't start at one. <clears throat> it's actually the other one that starts between zero and one. Yeah, so... Well, again, it starts at the... Yeah, exactly. It starts yeah. at the, the, whatever the inverse of the mean of the gregariousness is. Yeah, but that is in a large, not in a standardized large. Yeah. So that's why it's the A is the inverse of the gregariousness, because it has large as we be and one. When you standardize it instead, you lose that 
0 and 1. See, that one, A, is within a lot. Yes. Non within a standard lot. And if you... Sorry, eh? You see, all the lar here on the left yes. are between 0 and 1. That's why they use the inverse of the gregarity. But as soon as you go into the standardization, So in a normal lar, you, you fit between 0 and 1. And to fit between 0 and 1, you make the inverse of the mean of the gregariousness, which the gregariousness is the tendency to stay in a group. And you want to see how that changes over time. Right? Now, in a standardized lar, because you cannot control for individual that you can um, recollect, you're not sure whether you can recollect all the individuals. You, st you standardize it, and therefore you cannot put it anymore. You lose the one because it can be anything between zero and a value on top. Because you can manage everything. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, potential scenarios for this would be everybody just totally random, associate with whoever they want, or they are uh, totally permanent units that never asso associate with each other, or permanent units they associate randomly. So again, depend depending on your knowledge a priority about the association. Okay, now our second standardized LAR model. Uh, it means casual, uh, casual acquaintances in a large population including rapid, rapid disassociation. So it would be similar to the lagged association model three with four. Uh, association we will ask for about 1 divided by this parameter here, and they will level off until 0. <laughs> if there is no rapid association, then this value here is the inverse of the gregariousness. Let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Except. Except. Uh, Why is it so impressive? Yes. My physics professor in first year always used to say, and something like that came up, con convince yourself that this is true. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will use that very often from now on. Again, just other possible scenarios. Uh, if 
associates have equal chance of disassociating over time than we have. Casual, a very large society with no permanent or re repeated associates. Uh, Going to go quickly to this. The scenarios are the same. So we have association rates. It's, it drops a lot in the beginning. It drops again a level off. So we might be uh, the equivalent same scenarios for LAR 5 and 6. You might want to go back and check. I can't quite remember anymore. Uh, so associations could break up at an equal rate per unit plus low cons constant rate. I'm getting lost in my own notes. Which would mean, could mean a casual society with a finite population, constant companions, plus casual acquaintances in a large population or preferred companions in a large population, again depending on what you're working with. And you can use these three parameters A, B, and C to estimate how long an association may last. Uh, you can estimate gregariousness using 1 plus 1 divided by A plus C. And if you're working with permanent units, you could estimate typical unit size with this formula here. So that might be good for, I don't know, for ORCAs. For your work, you define the, social, the unit size or the units using modularity, right? And then you have an estimate of how many, or you know how many individuals are in each model. If you, f you fit this standardized model yeah. as well, right? It'd be nice to Maybe you can, yeah. That's a rough estimate, but you know, it's, it's another, mm -hmm. another, yeah, mm -hmm. parameter you can estimate from the same data and look at it differently. Yeah. yeah. So that would be a good uh, real world example. Yeah. Okay, and the last of all models, we have disassociation and we have two levels of drop. So, the first, the first scale, 1 divided by B, you might have fusion fusion, so individuals form groups and, and break them apart. Uh, so fusion fusions of nearly permanent social units, and then the longer G, um, it might represent transfers between these units. And then, yeah. So same scenarios of LAR 7 and 8 but we add mortality or long-term breakups or immigration. All right, that was a lot of models and coming back and forth around the same ideas. So what are we gonna do with so many models? Two things, we wanna see the one that is most, uh, that fits better to your data, the most parsimonious. And from then taking this vast model, we wanna estimate those parameters. We could, we don't have to, if you wanna, Estimate again. So we have eight or four candidate models or others that it might include. And now we can apply AIC or QIC if you need to correct for over dispersion to see the relative contribution of all models. So there's two approaches. You can take the best model and work with this one, or you can assume that all of those could happen and then you want to work with the relative contribution of all of them, or at least the three best ones, for example. And so we might extract some quantitative information of the population and the social structure, for example, unit, typical group size, typical unit size, number of individuals, mortality rate, things like that, using uh, quasi-likelihood method. Don't worry, stock prog will do everything for you. Just a quick note on uh, uh, key information criteria. Is everybody uh, familiar with that or have used before? <coughs> yep, good. So I'll just go quickly to this. Essentially, uh, let me just skip all of these details. So we have the fit to the model using the goodness of it using likelihood and the number of parameters. So ASC will reward good fit, but will uh, 
add a penalty for the number of parameters. So translating all of this, we have good the fit in parameters. Our best model, with the smallest ASC, will give uh, the simplest model with the better fit to the data. So the more par parameters you add, the better the fit, because you kind of explain pretty much everything what's going on. But that makes the model too complicated. So you want to get the simplest one with the better fit. So this trade-off between goodness of fit and parameters is essentially what the ASC is measuring for you. And we you get the model with the smallest ASC, suggests the, the, the most parsimonious one. The QASC, or quasi-archaic quasi information criteria, uh, will correct for the lack of independence of the data, which is usually the case for this type of data because of over dispersion of associations. So we have the ASC. If you know what that means, I'm sure you're familiar with this as well. We can calculate the, the differences between ASCs, between models, to then have a, a way of, uh, of comparing the other models to the best one, to the one that is smallest one. So you have, in this case, eight models. If the differences between them is between 0 and 2, doesn't indi indicate a substantial support for the model, so you don't have one single solution. If it's more than 4, yeah, not so much. If it's more than 10, forget about it. Another way of doing this, you can calculate the ASC weight, which is the exponential of the delta ASC, just as a little formula here, and you can calculate the likelihood which is just this thing standardized from 0 to 1. So one way of presenting these models or other mo uh, models you're trying to select uh, is this way. So you have your models here, put them with the parameters so you can look what they mean, and then you present, you rank them by the lowest ASC or QASC, you give also the differences between them and the contributions of them and the likelihood which is the standardized contribution. And then we can look, oh, this is, this is the best one likelihood. It, it has the largest weight, the lowest Q, QASC, and the higher likelihood. And these guys provide some support, so more or less about two, and these two ones is just not support at all. So you ideally you want to work with these two scenarios and then take a look at these parameters and so on. Last word of cautions about this. So the models describe the curve, not exactly the data, and the data itself not this uh, describe the social structure itself. So Keep that in mind. The names are suggested, not exactly what's going on. Uh, the models are being fit, fitted with uh, likelihood methods. They might not represent the best solution. You might want to try different starting parameters. In SOCPROG, when you fit these models, you, all the parameters are set, I think, for 0.5. You can change that try different combinations. Uh, and the QASC is useful, but again, not theoret theoretically justified. If you, it works in practice. If you want more details, take a look on this paper here. And last thing, when you run this, guys, if you want to use K uh, ASC SOCPROC, run all of the models at the same time, then they are ready values are relative to each other. If you run one, then the other, then the other, then they will not be relative and they will mean anything for you. So run all of them at the same time and then look at the one with the lowest ASC. Uh, I'll skip the part, I think we're running late. Okay. We can add, we can use jackknife to calculate the standard errors of the lagged association rates and also of the model parameters. Remember those B's and A's and C's? We can calculate 
uh, approximate just a, a rough estimate of their standard errors. Uh, see, the standard error not on the data on on the parameters on, and of the on model. The, yeah, so you can have remove the error bars, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can also estimate the standard errors of the model parameters. Okay. So this is the output when you fit one model in the soft frog. We give you the model, the explanation, like you know, all the mm -hmm. details, Q, A, C, and then for each of the parameters ah, here, okay. A, 1, 2, and 3, you have the okay. values. And so if you want to use this to calculate the inverse of the Gregarian lens, for example, you have here this. Uh, yeah, this is our model here. Um, good, so to illustrate, this is for a, a subset of that uh, data set with the Guiana Dolphins. So you can see just a short period of time. So we have jackknife standard errors. We can see that the lag association rates is greater than the no association rates. So this sounds uh, significant. And I don't know, it looks like after a year they start to decrease and go again. I don't know. So we fit a model to it. And in this case, the best model was the one with one parameter suggesting rapid disassociation rate. So it's way lower than one. Mm -hmm. So within one sampling period, there's a lot of disassociation. And some constant companions within this time lag. Okay? So rapid disassociation rates, other preferences that last for longer. We're, we're working on the model here. And it's greater than, it's greater than, it's smaller than one, but greater than the no association rates. And these, the grammar here, which is that one, gives you the proportion of this association within the sample period. And you, from this, you could calculate the inverse of the comparison. Is it standardized or not? Uh, this is not standardized. That, that's my, my, my question. How you, ch because how, ca because to not standardize, you have to be, have a very good reason. So unless you are in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in an aquarium yes. or in a, Zoo or in a whatever, in a yeah. How how can you in nature have that kind of certainty? Uh, yeah, you're right. If you're working with a small population where you recapture individuals for you know lots of times there, or in captivity, as you're saying, then lag association rates would be better. But in all, all other cases, standardized is the way to go. Here's just I'm just illustrating, but yeah. I would use standardized here. Good. So it's done already. Uh, I can show you quickly how to do a sock frog. And for those of you that have that have sock frog or don't hate sock frog yet, you can try. <laughs> uh, and now this is a main, a great advantage of sock frog over R because easy to plot, easy to fit. You can do these models in R if you want, but then you have to code the models yourself. You know, it's not hard. Anyway, here, you pass through all of those. Uh, you put in the data, set the sampling period. Remember, to use the smaller, the smaller sampling period you can have, so we have a better definition of the data. And do not add any restrictions. You can use all the individuals you have. And go straight to the temporal analysis. Oh, you've been here yesterday. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. The thing is, after you plot, then you can click here and fit in models. It will give you a window with all the models you have, with more or less their, their labels, <coughs> their mathematical notation here. And those are the starting parameters. You can okay. go ahead and run the default ones, but you might want to play around with them. And depending on you know, depending on the starting parameters, you can have different fits. 
I think everybody go for the for the uh, deeper <coughs> values, but if you want to try, you can you know increase or decrease one or the other. You can create your own model here if you want. And yeah, that means if you change uh, here, if you change this value for a2, you will change a2 over here on this third. So when running this. At least the first time, if you want to select the models, run all of them at the same time. And then we'll give you all these the ASCs and QASCs, and then you select the one the best, and you run it again only with that one. What is that option there for uh, maximum evaluations? Uh, I think this is for the for fitting the model uh, with the likelihood method. So I would just accept it. Just for, okay. Yeah, you can increase this if you want. Remember, usually log scale is, is good unless you're working with a very short time, time period. You can play with the moving average to get a smoother curve. Use jackknife and yeah, models are fit with the maximum likelihood. But the moving average would impact only on the graph, not on the, That's right. the modeling. That's right. It's just the visual display. So run all of them at the same time because uh, the values here are, are relative then you select the one with the lowest ASC or QAC so I probably will tell you if there's over dispersion you say yeah there's probably over dispersion prefer this over this and for creating the final plot run the no first then add to the plot, the lagged or the standardized, and then fit the model. Otherwise, you're going to fit the model on a new curve. And that's not what you want. Just, okay. Yeah, if you plot this first, then this, and then you fit. Otherwise, we'll fit here. Uh, all right, so it's 10. We can either have a break or give this a try, or both at the same time and taking pictures. <laughs> Whatever you want. Just, oh, I just forgot. The output of, so the two out outputs you're going to have is the plot, obviously, and in the command line you have all the information for all models. It, it fits for you in this format, so you have for each model the explanation, all the, all the parameters. So first run all of them and then look at the QAC or ASC. Uh, let me see, this is the one with the smaller one. And then you run it again with this model only. And then use that. Does that make sense? But does it say if there is over dispersion to look at the ASC instead of QAC? Does it say somewhere? Yes. Uh, sorry, parameters. In case there is the cap I don't mm -hmm. yeah, think she is the this is the new version, but it used to say that. But I, it's usually when the inflation factor is greater than one, you choose Q and C. Okay. Yeah, the new one it doesn't say. If you're running on the 2.4, you will say. It. And in R, you can in the as as night package, you can plot the like association rates. So for the lar our lovers out there, you can do that. But then creating the models, I think you have to create your own, you know, just like a linear model and then you add to the plot and you can calculate the C, not hard. But then it's you in R. <laughs> Good, so I'll leave it to you if you want to practice this and I'll be walking around or if you want to do this after you do the coffee break, yeah. fine as well.